In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a disk to manage source code for white lightning for the Commodore 64 by Oasis. I highly recommend watching the first video in this series before watching this one, as this builds upon concepts that I talked about in that video. With a white lightning disk in drive 8, I'm going to take a quick look at it. And the program that we're interested in is called FMAT. So we're going to load that up. It's a basic program. Whatever you do, don't run it yet. <laughs> Type in list. And what you can see here is a program that formats the disk with a specific name. And we're going to change that. We're going to make this, uh, I don't know, source, oops, uh, source code and then CZ. You'll notice that they have NO colon, which doesn't really matter, but this probably should be a zero. So we'll just kind of save that. So this program first formats the disk. It then loops through 17 tracks at 21 sectors per track. So it's about 357 sectors altogether. Um, and it issues a BA command, which is block allocate. And what that does is it's going to tell the disk that that block is used, even though there's nothing really there. So when this is run, we're not going to see the usual 664 blocks of free space. We're going to see a smaller number around 307. So before you run this, you want to take out your white lightning disk and put a nice blank disk into the drive. There is no are you sure for this program. It just does it. So this program takes a few minutes to run and we'll just kind of let it do its thing here. Okay, this normally takes about five minutes, but through the magic of editing, I made it take just a few seconds. Let's take a look at the disk and see what it looks like now. And as you can see, as I said before, half the disk seems to be missing and it's 307 blocks free. The disk is now prepared to store fourth source code along with regular data that you might need for your program. Whatever you do, do not validate the disk. And what I mean by validate the disk is don't do this. If you do this command, it'll free up all those pre-allocated spaces and give it back to the regular disk structure, thus corrupting your source code if you had source code on it. So, so don't do that. So now that we're done with this, let's boot up white lightning. So we're gonna take this disk out put the white lightning disk back in and start the system. So the source code for your program is stored 100% on disk and not in memory at all. There is no buffer internally that manages your code. All the interactions with the editor is directly with the disk. So on this disk with the way that we formatted it, we can fit 88 pages of source code on it, where a page is defined as 16 lines of text where each line is about 64 characters. And I say about because technically you can't put more than 63 on this version of fourth. But the fourth standard does say 64 for what it's worth. Just a warning though, this editor is super primitive even for the C64 at the time that this was released. But this is not White Lightning's fault. That is the editor as it was described in a fourth specification at the time. So we're going to learn just enough about the editor to be able to store and load our code. So the next thing we need to do is take the white lightning disk out of the drive and put in our specially formatted source code disk. So as I said, there's 88 pages of code. Let's take a look at what's on the first page right now, which should be nothing. And you look at a page of code by typing in the page number and we use the list word. That's gonna go to the disk, read the sectors off of it, and just show it to you on the screen. And as you can see, there's mostly nothing here. But what you don't see is there might be some hidden characters that don't quite print correctly on our freshly formatted disk. So what we want to do is we want to clear this page before we start using it. And we do that by using the clear word. Now you'll notice when I pressed enter here, it didn't ask me, am I sure? So when you use words like clear and erase and delete, triple check what you're looking at before you press that enter key. You can so quickly, on a drop of a hat, wipe out a page of code. Not a great feeling. All right, let's enter our first line of code. So because we ran the list command, our editor is now interacting with page one. So now we're going to use the individual line editing commands and those words work off of line numbers. So we're going to take line zero and we're going to put a line of code there. That's what the P word stands for. And we're going to type in, I don't know, gray one, tea border, black tea paper. And you'll hear the disk drive write that to disk. All right, let's add another line of code for line one. And we're going to make the ink gray three, and then we'll send that clear home character to the kernel to clear the screen. Pretty cool. Now, if we use the L command, this is a quick way of typing one space list. It lists whatever the current page 
that the list command had previously used, which is page one, and we can see our two lines of code on it. So at this point, I think we should put a comment before the first line to kind of describe what this page of code does. And we do that with the S command. So we're going to do line zero and we press S. This is going to insert a blank line above the first line. The S stands for spread. And I think the concept was it moves everything down the line and it spreads spaces across the first line of code. Can't really think of a better way to memorize what that does. Uh, so now if we list this, of course, that line of code is empty and we have enough room to put a comment there now. So once again, we're going to use the P command. All right. And the way a comment works in fourth, it's an open parenthesis and has a word by itself. So we put a space and then we put whatever we want and a closed parenthesis ends the comment. So we're going to put in, I don't know, in it the screen. Okay. So let's put a nice friendly welcome message on line three. So we'll do a three put we'll do two spaces. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Welcome to white lightning one two three quote cr cr even though it's running directly to disk most of the time you'll notice that that last time it did not so before you do anything like run your code or maybe just not quite sure it's saved periodically just type in the word flush and that's going to take anything that's sitting in the disk buffers and then write it to disk so now we're confident that all of our code is there and of course we'll type in l and then we can see our code so how do we run this program uh, believe it or not, it's the word load. And what you do is you put the page number and you type in the word load. Now, in most programming languages that I've ever worked with, loading means taking something off of a storage medium and bringing it into memory. Not so in fourth. <laughs> what, this pro what this will do is it takes the page number and by loading it, it runs each line on that page one by one until it gets to the bottom. So if we run this now, you can see that it ran all the code. And now we have our screen. Now I've got a little bit of a typo, or not really a typo, but I want to I want to adjust the stars at the end of the first line. So let's look at the edit command. So we'll type in list to list our code out here, and we want to edit line three. So as you can imagine, we put three onto the stack, and we type in the word edit. Be careful not to type in e. E erases a line. We want to edit the line. So we'll press enter here, and all it does is it constructs a line of code for us as if we're putting a new line. So it's kind of a shortcut. So I just want to add in two more asterisks here. Oops. All right, and then if we lift this out, I think that looks better. Let's flush these buffers again and run it and see if our welcome message looks a little better. Yeah, I like that. What would happen if we had so much code that we needed more than 16 lines. Well, there's a word we can use and it's called continue. And here's how it works. Underneath the last line of code, we can put in a dash dash greater than. It looks like a pointer to the next page and that's kind of how it behaves. So what will happen here is it'll run those first four lines of code, see that dash dash greater than sign, and then immediately flip to the next page and run. Now we get another nice bonus out of this is when that runs, Anything underneath it is just completely ignored. So you can use that almost as a place to put some freeform text. So you might say something like uh, page three has game logic or something like that. And you can kind of have like a little dictionary to where to, of where to find things on this diskette. So let's, let's flush these buffers out and let's put some code on page two. And we do a to list to switch the editor to page two. And of course, show us what's there. Since we haven't put code on page two before, you want to clear this first to make sure there's no strange characters that are sitting out there. Maybe on this page, we can put a piece of code like, uh, I don't know, interpreter uh, ready. So the last word we're going to explore with the editor is the stop word. And what we can do is on line one, we could put in a semicolon S. Whoops, one put semicolon S, got that backwards there. And this is gonna tell the loader while it's loading through each line and running it, when it sees a semicolon S, it says stop, there's nothing else on this page for you to look at. And of course, just like the continue word that we looked at just a few moments ago, that means you can put some freeform text 
at the bottom of this page as well. So I can put something like this code won't run with load. All right. So once again, we're going to flush the buffers. And to truly test this out, we use our cold command again to reset the white lightning environment. And we just type in one load. There's our first page. There's our second page. And it's ready to go. So at this point, we now have the absolute basic amount of knowledge of white lightning and forth to start working with graphics. So in the next video, we're going to tackle two-color high-resolution graphics. See you then.